All right, so we will start. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all safe and coping with this difficult time. My name is Aya Shebi. I'm the African Union Youth Envoy. And welcome to the virtual African Union Youth Consultation Series on COVID-19 for a collective youth response. We've been convening these online consultations since 13th of March, uh, but with small groups of 20 to 30 young people. Many of you asked to be part of this, so we managed to make these live webinars and hopefully we can continue to do them uh, every week. Uh, in the African Union, the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, knowing as Africa CDC, is the specialized technical institution leading the response on the pandemic and supporting member states and their public health institutions to detect, prevent, control, and respond to the COVID-19. So our guest today is the chief of Africa CDC. Thank you very much, director, for joining us to engage with young people. We're going to be together for the next hour, and this is how we're going to run the show. So I'll give first director the floor for 15 minutes then we will open up to questions and engagement from you so if you want to ask a question just uh, go down to the bottom of our page where it says Q&A and click on ask a question tab on the right top uh, since we also have only capacity for a thousand in this uh, room and it's already sold out so we are live on Facebook page just go to a youth envoy and also share with your friends uh, and ask them to comment we will gather some questions from there too uh, the webinar will be in English, but you can ask your questions also in Arabic and French. Uh, le programme sera en anglais, mais vous pouvez poser vos questions en arabe et français. C'est uh, le programme en langue anglaise, mais vous pouvez vous poser des questions en arabe ou en français. We will also run some polls throughout the webinar, so please also participate. So, Director, uh, we all know that we are now faced with visible challenges despite uh, the denial that this virus exists in many of our communities in Africa at first. Uh, and we have a communication challenge that needs a lot of uh, trust building and requires the collaboration between government institutions, efforts and communities, particularly young people to fight together the pandemic. So this is our topic today. Uh, please talk to us about community and youth engagement. Thank you. Thank you, Aya, for your um, kind invitation to take part in this platform, which I've been looking forward to. And uh, this is really exciting. And thank you for your leadership. And thank all the young uh, people who are on this program and who are all leaders in their own rights. Uh, my name is John Nkengasong. I currently serve as the director of the Africa Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and uh, in abbreviation, the Africa CDC. Let me say a few things just to put this in the right context. First of all, the COVID-19 is a disease caused by a virus called the severe acute respiratory syndrome virus, uh, coronavirus 2. So the disease is COVID-19 and the, the virus is called in abbreviation SARS-2 COVID. 19. So I think it's uh, very important to note that uh, this is not the first time that we are dealing with an emerging uh, a disease or virus. Uh, there are some facts that I, I like to leave you with. One is that uh, there are about 200 viruses in the world waiting to jump into human beings. I think that is very important. The second fact is that every year there's a new virus that, is, uh, that emerges, that crosses from that 217 to be specific, viruses that are in the wild. All that needs to occur is that there's an uh, appropriate environment for that virus to jump into what we call a secondary um, host and then gets into humans. So why is this happening? This is happening for about four big reasons why viruses are jumping into us. First of all, the, the population growth of the world is uh, escalating. If you take a continent, for example, at independence, we were less than 300 million people on the entire continent, from Cairo to Cape Town, from uh, Dakar, Senegal, to uh, uh, Mogadishu in, in um, Somalia. Today, we are about 1.3 billion and projected to be 2.5 billion 
in, 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 the, in 2050. That means there's a lot of movement of people. There's a lot of urbanization. I mean, big cities, and there's a lot of needs for us to press and get our uh, nutritional resources and infrastructural needs. And because of that, we expose ourselves to these new viruses and they emerge, they give them, you offer them an opportunity to adapt into the population and then become a, a problem. Uh, so I, could, I do this extent just to say that COVID-19 is not something related to 5G. I'm a virologist for, for 31 years. So I know what, what I'm talking about. And uh, secondly, that there will be another virus that will emerge after this one is done. I will end this general part by saying that uh, this is a generational health crisis that will be studied in textbooks for years and years to come. Uh, the only other time in my probably heard memory that this has happened was in 1918 uh, when the Spanish flu broke out and within two years it killed uh, 50 million people, 50 million to 100 million people. That was in 1918. So today we are faced with a virus that has uh, uh, infected more than 2.5 million people that has killed over 160,000 people. In our continent, the virus has uh, affected or, uh, more than 24,000 people as of today and has killed about 1,100 people. So we are uh, uh, seeing an escalation of the virus on, on the continent. Uh, there are many no unknowns that we have for the continent. For example, what is going to be the, 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 the trend of the virus on the continent with respect to co-infections with other diseases, that is HIV, malaria, TB, and others that you know of. Uh, we know that a combination of malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV will uh, result to the deaths of about 1.2 million people each year on the continent, so that is an additional burden. We also know that our health systems are weak. We have few doctors and nurses, and we just don't know what um, the population dynamics will uh, lead to. For example, 70% of our population is under the, the age of 30, so it's mainly a young uh, population there. So I'll, I'll leave that at that, but move on to conclude that there are a couple of things that we must do. First of all, there must be an African-led response, an own response, and we count a lot on everybody, including and especially the youths, to play an active role in this response. I call it a community-based response. If we have to win this fight against COVID-19, it has to start with a community and end with a community, which means you all have to be champions and exercise two things. One is personal responsibility in this, which means what are you doing to make sure that you protect yourself and your family? And then secondly, what are you doing to make sure that we protect the, fam the, the, the communities there? Are you a champion? I want that at the end of this discussion, we leave by saying that I am a COVID-19 champion, which means you will do everything to stop it and deny the virus from the spreading. There are four things we must do. One is that we must work with the public health experts to make sure that we institute and governments uh, basic hygiene conditions, washing of the hands, uh, sanitizing hands, and making sure that we, we maintain social or physical distancing as much as possible. Second thing we need to do is to ensure that we support the whole exercise of contact tracing and do not stigmatize and discriminate. You have the burden on your shoulders. I have the burden on my shoulder to make sure that no one is discriminated in this. If you discriminate in a disease uh, struggle like this, a challenge like this, then if the disease goes underground, it becomes difficult to fight. So we cannot discriminate and stigmatize. I'll leave that point by saying that it is a human right issue, which means that we also have to collectively be there for one another. The third thing we need to do is clearly that we have to uh, create, use different avenues uh, in our own powers to make sure we contribute. I call that group, group accountability, which is through your networks and channels, you can exercise leadership and fight this virus. And thirdly is I'm looking forward to uh, 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 we are the Africa moment, and that has to be led by the youth, which means if you recall in 1979, 
when there was hunger in Ethiopia, there was a big movement led by Steve Wonder and Michael Jackson and, and to lead that kind of a, 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 a drive. This is the moment for Africa, especially for the youth, to lead a We Are African movement against COVID. So thank you very much for the opportunity. I'll stop there and take a few questions, unfortunately, because I have to move to the next room and do a briefing of the head of states, and they, they, I cannot keep the chairperson waiting, but I will take a few um, questions from you before I, I, I go. Thank you so much, and my sincere apology that technology had challenged us. I was on the call exactly at two o'clock, but couldn't connect. Over to you. Thank you very much, Director. So, young people, you heard Director saying that you need to take personal responsibility and be champion to take action, work with public health experts, and do not stigmatize or discriminate. So, a couple of questions. I'll start with the one from Jeff. Um, as young Africans or are young Africans now more at risk of being exposed to fraudulent medical products or unproven medicine as misinformation can lead to the promotion of such products from criminals trying to make profits? And Symbiot asked the same, uh, what, what Africa CDC is doing about vaccine being tested in Africa first? So that's a very good question. I mean, I would strongly encourage you that the only, you go to only two sources for information, uh, the Africa CDC website or the World Health Organization website, WHO. Those are the only two sites you should go to to look for information. And we will put updated every time to let you know uh, what, um, uh, who is doing which trials, where in terms of drugs and which drugs are available. For example, let me just be upfront. This the, the whole discussion about chloroquine or hydrochloroquine. I would say that except someone is in a clinical trial, do not take it yourself. These drugs have serious side effects, and there is no conclusive study that have shown that these drugs work uh, against a COVID-19 disease. So yes, it works against malaria. You hear a lot of anecdotal stories, but there is nothing that has gone this we haven't seen any studies yet that has proven that and we have to use science to drive our actions for vaccine trials let's not forget that we uh, uh, as africans we have to contribute to knowledge and contribute to the solutions we cannot be consumers at the same time we want to be sure africans that we will hold everybody trying to conduct vaccine trials in africa to the highest ethical and scientific standards and we have published already a statement on this. So vaccine trial by its, uh, per se is not a bad thing, but we should, it's actually a good thing to be positive, uh, but we, it has to be done using the international norms and standards. Mm -hmm. So the next question, uh, they're three from three different people, but I think they speak to the same issue, which is the affected communities. So Laureen says, as a young farmer, I'm curious on how AU is planning on addressing food insecurity in Africa during and after COVID. Dr. Saudi say, uh, what are the steps Africa CDC taking to prevent the spread of a pandemic in rural villages? And then Joyeux asking as a youth advocate on refugees and street children, what is also the response of the AU to refugee youth and street children? Because we see a lot of injustices toward them. So I think the three of them are addressing the communities that are the most vulnerable. Uh, how are we tackling uh, the supports to these communities as African Union? Very good questions. And then the Department of Social Affairs led by the Commissioner Amira is working on all those, uh, is the issues related to vulnerable populations. And I think um, there's a whole uh, uh, working group uh, giving talks to that and advising countries there. I think the AU, uh, as you know, is a policy making body that advise countries and develop policies and guidance, and they're working on that. The second thing is related to um, the, the, the rural area. There's a whole department here called Department of Rural uh, Agriculture and, and is also headed by Commissioner Sako and they're all uh, working on those issues there. So everything is being factored in. I mean, it's a multi-sectoral approach that the AU is using, which speaks to the need to have the whole of government, okay, approach in country because it transcends everything. It's an, a health issue, but also affects uh, 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 security, nutrition, and, and several areas there. So that's why our approach is very comprehensive. 
All right. Um, then uh, Matai and uh, Ter from South Sudan are asking similar questions around young people contribution and, and the movement that you mentioned, Director, at the beginning that youth should lead. So they're asking um, that there is ongoing effort by young people on the continent in different countries, but they most have challenges in coordination and resource mobilization. Is there an allocated budget to support African youth organization to also combat uh, COVID-19? I think let's start with a very simple formula that I'm, I'm uh, uh, challenging all of you. The question is, what can I do to contribute to COVID-19? I think that is it. I'll repeat the question. The question should be, what can I do in my ability to combat COVID-19? Let me use a simple formula here and, and ask that we create a movement going forward here of youths, which says if we are uh, 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 300 million youths on the continent, which we are far more than that. And we create a movement that we only donate a dollar. And through our networks, we create that movement that in the next six months, we target 200 million youths and we all donate a dollar that will be 200 million. And we use that 200 million to fight COVID across the continent without going to uh, the, 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 ext the West to look for 200 million. How does that sound? I think that's all we can do. I mean, let's look for very simple things that we can do, and then we'll be able to use that money to uh, support the food, uh, food supplies, uh, 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 any medicines, or uh, the general fight against uh, COVID-19. So I really call on you to get yourselves organized and, and, create, and create a movement we call We Are Africa Against uh, COVID-19. And there is also um, uh, initiatives by the African Union in terms of the Africa Fund of COVID-19 and the yes. special boys who are mobilizing private sector. So I think also a youth movement can help in fundraising, but also some of these funds might go to youth organizations that are doing great work on the front line. Um, so Pacific is, is asking uh, in terms of uh, testing, what is Africa CDC is doing to ensure that no one is left behind, knowing that we have really big challenges of testing on the continent? Oh, wonderful. We have just, we have been uh, working very hard to expand testing uh, at the continental level, where we were uh, very instrumental in driving testing from almost no country that had the testing uh, 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 diagnostics available in um, in January to about 48 countries now, and we've since rolled out more than 100,000 tests and uh, work with the Jack Ma Foundation to distribute over a million tests. And we just launched an initiative, and that is why I'm running next door to take part in the briefing of the the, the, the leadership about uh, a, an initiative that I also call on you to be part of it and support it. It's called Partnership to accelerate COVID-19 testing. I'll go slowly. Partnerships to accelerate COVID-19 testing with a tagline of test and trace. And I need, we need your help and your partnership there. So the whole purpose of this is that within the next four weeks, we roll out 1 million tests on the continent. And within six months, we roll out more than over 10 to 15 million tests. So that is what Africa CDC is doing. Mm. Fantastic. Um, there is uh, Saad from Morocco who is saying, what are the precautions taken by African Union to, to fight COVID-19 in every member state, knowing that we are a big continent, we have 55 member states, how are we coordinating that uh, effort? And maybe you could speak to the continental joint strategy, the task force and the amazing yes. training capacity building you're doing. So thank you. And I'll take that question that unfortunately have to run to <clears throat> the next meeting because uh, I'm being called already to come in there. So we've done a few, a, a couple of things, about five major things in general. One, we are supporting countries in the area of testing, uh, uh, really scale up of testing from training, building capacity in all member states to scale up. And second, we are supporting countries in the area of surveillance and enhance uh, 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 part of entry screening. The third thing we are doing is in the area of infection prevention control. That is making sure that our hospitals uh, and uh, healthcare facilities understand how to prevent uh, the healthcare work and especially those to take care of patients. Remember 3,500 healthcare workers were infected in, in, uh, in, in China. 
So we don't want that to happen in Africa. The other area we are working very hard is in the area of case management. We've trained over 4,000 uh, individuals across Africa uh, using different platforms on how to manage uh, the COVID patients. Uh, and lastly, the risk communication. We had uh, a series of workshops in Tunisia where we trained back to back over uh, uh, 35 member states there. So that's what, <coughs> excuse me, what, <coughs> that's what we have been doing so far. And since the outbreak occurred, we have, been, uh, we have moved to the response mode and we are supporting uh, uh, countries by putting staff in, in member states as, as quickly as possible using the limited resources that we have. It, again, I would have really loved to stay more than this, but I would really beg your indulgence yeah. to leave. Thank you very much, very much Director. Uh, one last um, one minute. What's your call to action to young people? Everyone, uh, more than a thousand young people now listening to you, what would be your call to action for them so they can go, as you said, as champions from here? My, uh, my uh, request from you is that let's create a movement. We call it uh, uh, youth, for youth Against COVID-19 in Africa. And that is the movement that I want you to drive uh, for so that we can save our continent. We can do it. I'm very convinced we can with your support. So Youth Against COVID-19 in Africa should be a tagline and the driving force that I urge you to create that movement and uh, both use that movement to sensitize the public, to use that movement to dispel false information and fake news, use that movement to raise just $1 or $2 a youth, and we target 200 million youths on the continent within six months. Thank you very much. We are behind your vision and your leadership, Director, and thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right, young people, you've heard it, a call to action to drive a youth-led movement against COVID-19 for the next three to six months to end this pandemic on the continent. So the director put it in your hands. I want to uh, thank him again for joining us and we come to the end of our webinar. Uh, we had the honor to have him today, but we will be hosting this webinar every week, uh, same time, every Wednesday, 2 p.m. East Africa time. Uh, and we will put some polls for you to also tell us the topics that you want us to discuss and the guests that you want us to uh, bring to you because this is our role to bring the African Union closer to young people. We have a role to play as African youth. We are the most uh, affected um, in our communities and we need to support also the most at risk, at risk who are our elders. So let us engage, let us mobilize, let us influence behavioral change in our community. Let us be the build, uh, bridger, uh, bridge builder and let us also accelerate response and responsibility. So whatever you are, continue to disseminate uh, credible, timely information from Africa CDC. We will be posting all the links uh, on our Facebook page and Twitter and all social media platforms. And know that you're not alone. We are in, all in this all together and let's unite to serve our continent. So thank you very much. See you next Wednesday. <laughs>